Good morning and welcome back to another video. It's Friday today. I loaded a load of milling wheat in Hook last night. I got up to Cunnock last night. I'm taking this load up to Liverpool to tip. I've been into Liverpool docks loads of times, but I've never actually been into the place where I'm tipping this before. So I'm tipping in there and then I'm reloading out of Liverpool docks as well for Clumpton. So that will get me home, but I'm also working tomorrow. Today should be quite easy, but you just never know. I have a nine and a 13 left to do it in, which is the minimum that we can have. Uh, and it also means I have to have an 11 off tonight because I've already used my three nine hours off. I'm hoping to get on a bit because it's, it's 10 to six now. So I need to be parked up by 10 to seven and then I cannot start until 10 to 6 tomorrow, which is a bit annoying because on a Saturday, really, you need to get on, but it is what it is. It's just how it's worked. So I've done my daily checks and I am now going to get on because I think I might need to. It's a Friday, you never know what's gonna happen. And what a beautiful morning it is this morning. It's a shame my face doesn't show it, really. I head up the M6, west on the M62, down the M57, and then follow signs for Liverpool docks. You can see the big cranes and buildings in the docks as we drive past, towards the entrance. I've arrived at Liverpool docks and there seems to be a little bit of a queue. I go past this place quite a lot, and it's not as bad a queue as sometimes I've seen it. So I'm hoping that it's not gonna to take too long. I've just got to wait here. Apparently there's two on this stretch and then a few in there. Um, but it says wait here until uh, green light shows. I made myself a cuppa because as I move forward, so I could see a bit more and it looks like there's quite a few people in there today. I got here at 10 to 8, so we shall see what time we leave. Where I'm loading to next is just across the road, I think, so it shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. It seems like it's impossible at the moment to keep my mirrors clean with all the salt that's on the road flicking up, so I give my mirrors a bit of a wipe off. And now finally, I'm at the front of the first queue that I've got to sit in. Nothing seems to be moving in there at all, even though someone's moved off of the Weybridge. I'm going to have a quick snack. I've got some yogurts. I can guarantee that as soon as I start it, that light's going to turn green. I had about a mouthful left when the light went green, so it wasn't too bad. But I've weighed in now, been sampled, and I've been told what to do. I've been given a little um, thing to tell me where to go, and he was quite helpful. He said it doesn't take very long to tip and there's probably about seven in front of me. So hopefully it won't take too long. I'm not sure what the time is now. 25 past eight. So it's not been too bad to get in, but I don't know how long it's gonna to take to get tipped. Chap just came over and told me that when he'd taken the sample, the sampler got blocked. So actually the sample didn't take. Uh, so I had to reverse back around onto the Weybridge get sampled again and then come back round. So I've done that. <laughs> if that's all that goes wrong today, that would be quite good because it wasn't too bad. I could get on the way bridge, reverse back off. I'm back in the queue now to tip. So there's, how many is there? One, two, three, four, five. And I think there's six there. Um, there's one just come off the pit. So there'd be the front one would be just going on. And then I'm finally at the front of the second queue. Woohoo! And that's where I've got a tip. It always amazes me how big these grain silos are. After about 20 minutes, I get on the pit myself and I'm able to tip. And we're finally tipped and out of there. Now, I'm not loading at the place I thought I was gonna load out of. I'm loading at a different dock, but also in Liverpool. So I'm just going to go down the road a little bit 
and then we will arrive at the other dock. It's now 11 o'clock, so I was in there for just over three hours waiting to get tipped, which is not really the sort of thing you want on a Friday. But if I get loaded straight away in here, I will have enough time to get back down in my 13 hours. As long as nothing else goes wrong. <laughs> not sure really how to pronounce it. It's like Hino. 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 It's like um, a Chinese manufacturer. It's an eight wheel tipper. Just went, went that way. I have actually never seen one in this country, so yeah, interesting. After I seen it, I did a bit of googling and I found out that it's a Tokyo company and it was founded in 1942. It is also a subsidiary of the Toyota Group. I was also surprised to see how many of these trucks were advertised on Auto Trader for sale in the UK. I also found out that there's a place that supplies parts in Hull. I've just got to the other dock where I'm loading out of and the number I've got doesn't match with their numbers so I've rung Wayne's and um, they're trying to sort it out trying to sort out the right numbers I'm just gonna have to sit here and um, wait so the company that we got the work from gave us the wrong collection address so I've actually had to go back into the part of the dock that I was in this morning to a different place, not a place where we normally load from. I haven't loaded in here for about three or four years. Um, everything's changed and it is one of those places where you are scared to death of breathing because you are sure you are gonna do something wrong. So I think I've finally got loaded. I just got a way out now hoping that I'm not overweight because that could be another issue but I'm gonna weigh out go and get some fuel on the dock and then make my way back down south hopefully with no hold-ups well it seems like they're having trouble with the fuel pumps here but finally I find one that works And then I head out of the docks towards the 57. It looks like we've got a beautiful day for driving in. By this point, I'm desperate for the loo and I'm starving as it's gone one o'clock and all I've had is a yogurt so far. So I pop into Burton Wood Services and I decide to split my 45 into a 15 and a 30, which just allows me to go to the loo and have a snack in my own time. I also pick up a bag of used coffee grounds for my compost that Starbucks give away for free. And then I get back on the road eager to make it home. But unfortunately the traffic is pretty stop start. Just as I am going past Hilton Park services which is near Birmingham, it goes down to one lane which is a massive hold up. Luckily it's nothing bad and it's just a fuel tanker broken down in the second lane. The lad looks pretty embarrassed that it's happened to him but it's just one of those things. The traffic gets very slow again around Worcester and because of all the hold-ups I'm coming close to four and a half hours driving time so I pull into Strencham services for a break. Luckily I only need half an hour. With all the traffic on the way down, I have managed to get to Strencham um, and it's 10 past four. I have until 10 to seven to get back to the yard and I know there's heavy traffic in Bristol. So I need to take my break and then try and work out if I can get back or not. It's not looking good got myself a little snack and while I was in there I seen somebody who used to work for another tipper company near us um, and he's now on for another company down near us called Evans and we had a little chat and stuff and catch up so that was nice but now I do need to get on because 
I am quite worried that I won't get back tonight. As I come through Bristol, the traffic is very stop-start and I realise I'm not going to make it back to the yard. Hi Gemma. Hello, alright? How's it going? Um, I'm not going to make it back to the yard tonight. How far are you going to get? Um, well, I don't know. I'm hoping that I will make, even if I make Bridgewater. Okay. That's right, yeah, you'll be down early tomorrow morning, aren't they? Yeah. So, I didn't make it back to the yard but luckily I had to pass my hometown on the way back to the yard which is about 40 minutes away and I have got here with literally eight minutes to spare I'm pretty pleased with that at least I can go home tonight all right I have to take the truck back tomorrow and still do all my work and I haven't washed the truck which I was hoping to do tonight but hasn't all been bad although I do have to have 11 off tonight which means that I can't start until quarter to six tomorrow, which I normally like starting earlier on a Saturday, but just to get it out of the way and get home earlier and start my weekend. My Ryan comes to pick me up and we decide what we're gonna have for tea. Yeah. And do you do a beef with mushrooms as well? Yes, we do. Can I have one of them as well, please? When I get home, I have a look to see how the builders have been getting on with the roof because we're doing a major house renovation at the moment. When I left on Monday, I could see sky when I looked up in this room. My Ryan gets very excited when I get home and tonight is no exception. I cannot wait to eat the Chinese we've brought home. Mm, delicious. <laughs> and then we have a little cuddle before I go and get showered and ready for bed. Having a shower in my own home is one of the best feelings of the week. It really makes me appreciate everything. And then, unfortunately, it's time to set those dreaded alarms. I get up early to make sure that my new video is uploaded and ready to post. And, of course, I have a cup of tea. Then, my Ryan takes me back to my truck. I've done my daily checks. I'm just going to fill out my paperwork and then we can get on back down south tip this load and then I can find out what I'm doing today because I don't actually know what I'm doing today I think it's just tipping a few trailers so we'll see when we get back to the yard what a difference on the motorway today compared to yesterday I've got into tip and there is one of ours sampling in front of me so I'm hoping that he's got something that won't be on the same pit as what I need to tip on Fingers crossed. Once Harvey has sampled and weighed in, it's my turn to sample and weigh in. And lucky for the both of us, we've got products that need to go on opposite pits, which means I get to tip straight away. I make the most of this time by having a clear up and tidying my stuff up ready to go home for the weekend. Once I've tipped, I take the sock off and I let the tailboard go. I fold my sock up and put it away on my trailer and then I drop the body down so that I can sweep out. I'm going to go back the yard and wash it today so I'm not too fussy, I just need to get the worst of it out. Then I pull forwards and sweep the pit in so that it's nice and tidy for the next driver. I then get back on the way bridge and go and get my ticket. Then it's back to the yard to find out what I am doing today.
I fill up my ad blue ready for next week and then I go and get my folder to find out what I'm doing today. I have two other trailers to tip, which are both wheat, so that should be quite easy, hopefully. So I'm just going to park mine up for a minute and then I shall look for the trucks that I need to take. I make sure that I take my glasses, my high vis, my gloves and my digicard with me. And this is the first one I'm tipping today. I put my digicard in and I make sure that I record other work between taking my card out and putting it in. I do this with a manual entry. And then I check around the truck to make sure that it is roadworthy and then make my way back down to the mill. I get sampled way in and back onto the pit as before. And that's it, we're away and tipping. This truck has a picture of the old Guinness advert on the back. Most of the trucks at Wayne's have a sea theme on the back because my boss is really into his sea fishing. Once I'm tipped, it's back to the Weybridge. That's another one tipped. I head back to the yard, take my card out, gather my stuff and go and find the next truck that I need to take down. This time I'm taking a Volvo and this one also has wheat on. And it's the same procedure as before, card in, manual entry, check around the truck to make sure that it's roadworthy and get back down to the mill. And once again, the load gets sampled, I weigh in and back onto the pit. This truck also has airbrushing on the back and this one is Battleships. And because it's a Saturday, it would be rude not to go to Jan's and have a breakfast. They have lots of pictures of local trucks up in here. That's my old one there. And then the next one down is Neil Conway's who has just got the brand new next gen. And then at the bottom is the old Black Pearl, which was Peter Pratt's. Then I go back, finish off tipping and I get weighed out. I get back to the yard and I need to put it in the same space as I took it out of because it's the only space left in the yard. And it's a blind side back in between other trucks. Once again, I take my card out and I get all my stuff together and leave the truck. And it's back to find mine as I need to wash it. I would like to say a massive thank you. Well, to, to be honest, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's liked and commented and watched my videos. Um, I wasn't expecting the response I've had in the last few months and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And also a big thank you to a guy called John. Sorry, I don't know your second name, um, but he sent me some um, pipe. Sorry, John. Some um, pipe trimmers, pipe cutters, and some snips. He's seen the video of me fixing my air leak and he sent these to Wayne's Transport. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And you're right, I probably am a bit dangerous with a Stanley knife, but I haven't hurt myself yet. So John is a very good name. Uh, it's a family name of mine. If I was a boy, I would have been called John. Uh, my dad's called John and my gramps was John and my gramps cousin was John and blah, blah, blah. So that's all three tipped. And I've done my paperwork for my week and my Saturday loads. And I'm just gonna take that up to the office Hopefully somebody's still here. <laughs> they must be because the gates are open. I put this week's folder in and take my empty folder for next week out. I also need to collect some rolls, a defect book and a ticket book while I'm there and download my digicard. 
Then I get my truck onto the wash and I'm just spraying the wheels with some Red 7. This helps get rid of the brake dust. I get this from Autosmart. Then I put my hair up and put it under my hood so that it doesn't get wet while I'm washing my truck. It also makes me look like a right wally. I didn't realise what I look like every week until I've just filmed myself doing it. Then I get her all soaked up, ready for a good wash down. This will take me probably just over an hour. But don't worry, I won't make you watch the whole thing. And finally, she's clean. Well, at least on the outside. So as it's Saturday, I am also going to do the inside of the trailer. This needs to be done as a minimum every six weeks and I find that it's easier to do it on a Saturday when nobody's around. Once that's done I get everything out of my truck and park her up. And that's that, all clean and parked up for another week. Well, the truck's clean, me, not so much.